Welcome to the channel. My name is Zephyr, and if you don't know me already, I'm just a regular college student focused on health and human performance. A few years ago, I was about 100 pounds heavier, lost my way with health, but now I want to use what I learned on that journey to get to where I am now to help others make healthier choices, perform better in sports and daily life. And we have a very important video for doing just that today. It's functional foot health. How do you get stronger feet? The feet are the key to the rest of the lower body, the rest of your entire body, really. It's going to control everything. If you have foot problems, if you can't move well, that's going to hinder yourself. You're going to be on the bench for a while. So um, this is a super important video. Let's walk you through the best way to take care of your feet. What shoes should you be wearing? What should you stay away from? Look at these shoes. Four pairs of barefoot style shoes, wide toe box, zero drop, meaning there is no elevation from the heel to the toe. There's minimal cushioning. Why do I make this choice? This allows your feet to naturally absorb force on the ground and splay as they would ancestrally. And the problem with the shoes most people wear now is they're cramping on the toes, which is leading to all kinds of problems in your feet, which is also causing problems throughout your legs and you know, keeping people out, keeping people injured a lot of the times. And so in terms of daily athletics, I'm usually going with this Merrill shoe. You can see very minimal cushion. There's almost nothing there. And it has a wide toe box, it allows your, my feet to splay out naturally. When I started wearing these shoes, my feet actually grew, went up a whole size because they were able to actually properly extend and not be cramped anymore. If you look at these Widdens, much more budget friendly option, about half the price of the Merrells actually. And these are a great starter intro to barefoot shoes. They have a little bit more cushion, which I don't like as much because your feet aren't able to absorb quite as much force and build up as much function. But these are a very good option. Your feet feel like they're in a glove wearing these. And it really comes back to that original point of, so why should our shoes not be shaped like our feet actually are? And when I need to do a little bit more strenuous activity, so we're thinking pickleball, basketball, uh, tennis, stuff like that, I'm gonna go with these uncivilized, which are barefoot style shoes. You can see when you bend them, your foot's able to have that full flexion. They're zero drop, wide toe box, but they do feel a little bit more sturdy. So when I'm playing basketball, I would have tons of, of lower leg injuries, uh, calf injuries, knee injuries. I broke my tibia uh, playing basketball actually. It's tons of sprained ankles. When I switched to these, when I switched to barefoot style shoes, those injuries completely went away. And yes, this is anecdotal, but there also has been significant scientific evidence on this, as when shoe wearing Europeans who are often going for something more like this, the Saucony running shoe that has a massive cushion here, you know, this feels like it's like massive block of styrofoam and it has a big elevated heel, a very narrow toe box. When shoe wearing Europeans are operating in these, they had much weaker and less functional feet that were deemed less healthy than barefoot tribes, one being the African Zulus, who were studied for, you know, how did these, their feet actually stack up? Because they're always barefoot. They never wear shoes at all. And really, ultimately, they decided that they were much healthier. They had stronger feet from, you know, walking around. And so the decision really, from a consumer point of view, and looking at that research is throwing this type of shoe out, going for options like this. And it's like, I know what you're gonna say. I go to work, I can't wear a barefoot shoe like this to work. It just doesn't look professional, it looks weird. Well, there is other options and one of those is Vivo Barefoot, probably the top player in the barefoot shoes market right now. And Vivo Barefoot is a very cool brand because it was actually started uh, but because a tennis player was struggling with injuries and he didn't know what to do. He had tried all the therapies and um, you know recovery strategies out there and he got an odd suggestion and the suggestion was try playing barefoot. See what it does for you. You know, see how it can 
impact how you feel, how your lower legs feel. What, what is that gonna change? And he resisted this at first, but when he tried it, it was revolutionary. His feet recovered, they got a lot better, and it, it just improved everything for him. And so going to an option like Vivo Barefoot for your dress shoes, when you're gonna be in the office 40 to 100 hours a week, choosing an option like this over the more common Cole Haan or other brands like it, which have a much more narrow toe box. Look at the difference there. The elevation in the heel as well. This is gonna make your feet get weak over time. So I would recommend throwing this out as well. Instead, go for something that's gonna naturally support your feet more and allow them to function as they should because that's something we're losing over time. And as shoes change to fit consumer styles and needs, you know, this is something that we have to think about as a society. What do we want? Do we want strong feet or shoes that look good? And I don't blame people necessarily for choosing shoes that look good, but then I wouldn't be surprised if you have problems with your feet, if you get bunions, if that leads to injuries, because this could be the solution for you. Now, if you're an athlete, this is especially important because you're in situations sometimes, you're playing soccer, you're playing football, you're playing lacrosse like I do, and you need to play you need to wear cleats, it's essential. You have to do it, you can't cut properly, the field's wet, the field's muddy, whatever. What option are you gonna go with? Well, here's a more traditional looking cleat. This is a Nike cleat, you can see very narrow toe box. And this is a New Balance Freeze, which I really like these, these cleats. New Balance has been known for their wide models and here is one that follows that. I think these cleats are already naturally a little bit wider. You can see the difference there. But I really like the New Balance Freeze because I'm able to get them in that wide line and it just feels a little bit more natural on the toe box. Cleats are already zero drop, which um, you know tells you all you need to know about how professional athletes want to you know, run and actually operate naturally if um, you look at it. And if you have to wear shoes, go for an option like this. Wide toe box, zero drop, and minimal cushioning so that your feet can get stronger over time like they naturally should. While these shoes I talked about are great options, the best option is getting outside and being barefoot, getting your feet in nature, regulating your circadian rhythm naturally. This is gonna be the most important way to get your foot health back to what it was when we, you know, were where we were 100, 100, 200, 300 years ago. This is what they have been doing for centuries. So don't overcomplicate it, get outside. And if you liked what you saw in this video, like and subscribe. There's more content like this coming your way soon.